All right, so IoT Core build versus buy. Look, the IoT landscape is shifting massively right now. For anyone that's paying attention, there's been lots of news in this space. Uh, lots of big companies have, uh, quote unquote, uh, exited the IoT software space. Uh, this includes IBM, SAP, Google, Bosch, et cetera. Um, they're sunsetting their services, their platforms, all these different pieces. And many companies now have to make strategic decisions on how to proceed with their IoT initiatives, right? So it's, it's a little bit of a troubling time for folks. Um, but I've got some good news for you. I think it's a, a wonderful time for IoT, and I'll explain why. Um, you know, the heart of these decisions that that you folks all have to make uh, is is really what do I do now, right? Do I trust uh, another vendor, or do I go and build my own IoT core? So it's your traditional uh, build versus buy conundrum, and and I'm I'm here to give you some some real detailed information on, on what that involves. I'm also gonna give you some strong opinions on what you should or should not do. Um, so I'll explore the pros and cons and, and I'll be I'll be real upfront about what my beliefs are here. And again, I'm, I'm Eric Simone, I'm uh, the CEO of ClearBlade. We're based in Austin, Texas. We are an IoT software company for both cloud, on-prem and edge. And uh, we've got hundreds of customers around the world using our software. All right, so I'm going to start again just on what is an IoT core. I, I presented this last time, but it's a really a good base setting slide. And, and really, in its simplest definition, an IoT core is the central engine that connects, communicates, and controls things, right? So uh, I've got things on the left, uh, on the right hand side here. I've got uh, different services I may want to use in the cloud or uh, in my enterprise on the left hand side. And the core is the foundation of all well-built IoT solutions. It's a very complex piece of software, and it must be built securely and to scale efficiently. Because uh, when you start building these things, everything's pretty easy when you're connecting a few hundred, a few thousand, even 10 or 20,000 devices. In my experience, it starts getting pretty hairy when you get beyond 20,000 devices that are communicating uh, at least you know once or twice every minute, um, and uh, and you really need a strong IoT core, a strong IoT foundation to scale effectively to avoid refactoring, rebuilding everything that you already started. So let's talk about build, and I've got here listed on the left hand side a bunch of open source MQTT brokers. And listen, MQTT is fantastic. It's become the de facto messaging standard for IoT. It's something ClearBlade uh, made a bet on over a decade ago when it wasn't so popular. So we know everything about MQTT and these open source uh, uh, pieces of software are extremely valuable. Cool stuff. Um, there's a lot of hype these days about how many connections uh, these things can handle. 200 million uh, connections over X number of minutes in the lab. All this stuff is very exciting. and. I'm going to break this down a little bit for you that that while these 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 um, metrics matter in the lab, uh, they're not really indicative on what happens in the real world. So let's let let's break that down a little bit. So let's just do a real world example. Say you've got a company that you expect is going to scale to 200 million uh, electric vehicles over the next few years, right? And uh, I'm going to connect those to an MQTT broker like one of these. Uh, this is basically the test they're doing. I've got a device, it's gonna send a message uh, uh, at, at an interval. I'm gonna scale up to 200 million and look, I can scale this broker, we've got good software. That's great, except when you're dealing with an IoT core, there's a lot more that goes into it. In fact, if you look at the fine print on some of these reports, uh, they take out things like security, um, which is convenient for a lab, which isn't real, uh, applicable in the real world, uh, especially if you've got an electric vehicle company, right? So uh, scale matters, but uh, there's much more that needs to go into it. So let's let's say you're building out your solution. Okay, now I got to add security uh, in a security layer in. So that's either you know token off or uh, or certificate based or both. Um, that adds that adds latency, that adds overhead, that adds compute. Um, now, now that I've got that, what else do I need? Well, if I'm connecting these cars, I also need 
look someplace to to to, to show the data. I need a, an application client, so um, I'm gonna I'm gonna connect that in. Uh, more overhead, more scale, uh, more things to consider. Uh, by the way, every connection adds overhead, adds latency, adds compute, adds things that you have to have to manage and monitor. All right, so now that I've got that, you know, I also need a, a device registry to um, to list all these vehicles, so I now know what cars are on the road and 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 uh, how they're connecting and and all sorts of things, right? So I have the device registry again, more complexity. Now, uh, you know what? I I, I want to persist some data. I want to store some data because I need a digital twin of of each of my cars. So I I want to know what its status is when it's connected. I want to know what its last status was. When it disconnected, I want to know firmware. Uh, I want to know the in-vehicle systems, all that stuff. So again, more complex, more complexity, more scale. Now I'm, I'm going to want a rules engine. Uh, I'm going to want to do some things based on certain events, right? So if I've got, uh, you know, I've got a low charge, uh, I want to do an alert back to the consumer that you need to go find a charging station. All sorts of different things that I want to build in to my solution. Uh, now I want to do integrations. Now I want to, you know what? I want to stream to that cloud pub sub uh, service. I want to use um, some of their, uh, maybe some of their AI uh, uh, capability. Uh, I want to go, um, you know, I, I want to work with my enterprise systems that uh, that record all this data that are my systems of record. Uh, again, more complexity that I built in. And then as I scale this thing up, I need to monitor how all of these features are working. I need to understand uh what's happening at scale as i scale up to 200 million vehicles uh moving all this data around storing all these things it gets real complex really fast so these are all the components that go in to an iot core um now let's step into what do we do uh with a piece of software that's built to house all these things so when you buy an IoT core or use an IoT core service, all of these features are packaged into the core functionality, right? So there, it's a single IoT core service with these uh, these components built in, built in to perform, highly scalable. So uh, any core that you look at should have customers that have really tested its scalability, um, inherently secure. These pieces, instead of being disparate and, and, and in different parts of the solution, they're welded together uh, to, to make it uh, secure, to make it extremely scalable, and then to make it flexible. So I can place this software where I need it to run. Um, the other thing that, that people overlook is it's properly maintained. Um, there's a, a company behind this software that all they do every day is work on improving it, work on adding features, making sure that it is there. An IoT core is very similar to an operating system. So it's something that that is the foundational layer of what goes into IoT. So it's a very serious piece of software. And I'm not saying that you couldn't build, I'll back up one, this. But if your business isn't software, then I think you should really consider the effort, the cost, the risk involved in building something like this. Even with all of the marketing messaging around number of connections and look how great this one piece of the stack is. Okay, let's go on to a little bit bigger picture. So when I look at IoT and I look at what's happening in the industry, you know, everything starts at the operating system layer, right? Typically Linux, Windows is another one. Um, but if you, you you base everything at that, the IoT core is the foundational layer that sits above that. There's a lot of talk these days, and I agree with the talk that IoT needs to verticalize, and and it does. IoT should have specific features and functions per vertical, but at the foundational layer, there there that bedrock needs to be solid because if the verticalization of IoT is going to happen and, and thrive, it needs, to, it needs to be built with the right components at the, at the foundational layer. And this is where the shifting sands are happening right now. So what I'm seeing starting to happen is folks in the energy space, folks in the transportation space, companies that are you know, dedicated to manufacturing and agriculture, they're building the vertical layer on top of 
these type of, of foundational layers, the IoT core. That's what's going to allow IoT to thrive over the next few years. And, and, and we'll talk a little bit more about how this rebalancing affects things. All right, let's talk a little bit about flexibility. The other part of a core uh, that, that, that should be available is that core should be placed where you as the customer want to place it, right? So, so whatever cloud is your preferred cloud, on-premise if you need it on-premise or at the edge. And, and, and these things aren't separate. What happens in a core should happen at an edge. Um, I think the edge industry lags the overall IoT industry by about two or three years. There's still a lot of messy noise around moving bits, moving different app components down to the edge. And I think we're missing the same, uh, we're not, we're missing the same component. We're not getting the same joke that we got in IoT, which is you need a foundational layer that sits just above the operating system to enable that functionality at the edge, just like you need it in the cloud, just like you need it on premise. And that needs to be the same in all these locations. So that flexibility uh, is something I would demand as a, a customer so that I can decide where I want to put my software. And as I grow my business, as I grow my functionality, uh, I want options. So build versus buy. Um, unless your business is software, I don't think anyone should build an IoT core. Uh, a lot of this is based on over 10 years of experience. Um, you know, I, I often make the joke, if 10 years ago, uh, my team and I knew what we were embarking on, I don't think we would have gone down the path because it's a very, very hard piece of software. But when you've got a decade in and you made the right decisions early on things like MQTT, um, things like edge compute, right? And you have hundreds of customers all around the world that are relying on your software, you now know the pitfalls, you know uh, the things that you had to go through, you know the tests that the very big customers have put you through, uh, both security-wise and scale-wise. So um, the other area where maybe you wanna do this uh, IoT science experiment on the left is if you're in it to learn, right? If I wanna learn how to build this stuff, and if it helps me uh, progress my career, if it helps me uh, progress my knowledge, that's great. Um, but then you're on the way to probably a job in a software company. Uh, at the higher levels, if your business is is betting uh, this sort of activity, um, think real hard about the time and, and effort involved in building this. Um, I have seen the messes, many of them, and we've been involved in many, um, what I would say, clean up on aisle sevens, uh, companies that have spent four, five, six years trying to make this work or rebuilding it. And then finally uh, saying, you know what, let's buy this piece of foundational software and build on top of that. Um, all right, so now let's get into a, a topic which may generate some questions, which I'm happy to answer. Why is IoT software disappearing in some of these companies? The big, you know, the big ones like Google and IBM and Hitachi and Boss, Bosch and SAP. It seems to be this, oh my gosh, this mass exited out of IoT. Why, right? Why? And, and um, I can tell you based on what I know, it's number one and first and foremost, these divisions have not been profitable. It's about money, first and foremost. Makes total sense in a big company, right? When you invest hundreds of millions or billions of dollars in a service and you don't see the returns on that investment, eventually there's a point in time you say, you know what? This is not our core business. Let's let's uh, let's stop the bleeding and and move on. Doesn't mean they're getting out of IoT completely. It just means let's let's see if someone else can come in and fill this role and fill up our clouds with data, right? Because at the end of the day, if your primary business is cloud or enterprise software, right, or tools or you name it, I mean these are broad companies. If someone else can provide that functionality, yet I still get to do all the things that, that I do as a big enterprise, software provider, service provider, you name it, then, then let's, let, let's, let's have at it. So there's this rebalancing going on in the industry. And while it's a bit nerve wracking, uh, especially for the companies that are impacted, it is really good for IoT because this rebalancing is going to allow the, the, the right companies to step up and provide that functionality. And instead of 600 plus, we'll have a handful that say, you know what, 
these foundational components work, they're proven to work at scale, and now everybody can go ab about filling their clouds or, or building their services around this, right? Building their verticalized stacks on top of this foundational layer. Um, I've got question marks by a couple up there because with recent news, especially, you're, uh, you're seeing some IoT folks getting uh, laid off in these companies, and it's for the same reason that some of the others got out. Uh, it's not profitable. So what happens now, I think it's, uh, if you're in a business that's leveraging some of this software, I think it's have a plan B, not saying it's gonna happen right away, but um, make sure that you know what you're gonna do in case something goes away. Um, I would also add that whatever software provider you choose, I would suggest that uh, you choose a provider that's all they do is IoT. Um, if and, and a provider that has been around for a long time, because uh, and one that has customers that can you can talk to that can talk about scale, they can talk about security, they can talk about how do they support, how are they supported, because that's the key piece um, of, of knowing that the software works, that the company is going to be there, uh, and the fact that it's flexible enough not only to move it where you want. But also make sure in case something better comes along or something happens, make sure that you can you can export all of your data, all of your services out of that uh, vendor software easily. All right, so I'll, I'll talk a little bit about ClearBlade, then I'll open up for questions. Um, as you probably know, Google had, is deprecating or are sunsetting their IoT core in August of this year. Um, ClearBlade is one of the companies that is replacing that IoT core, and we've We've actually added several hundred customers over the last few months and got them up and running very quickly. So providing one for one functionality, in fact, in some cases, better functionality per region and, and allowing those customers to pay exactly what they were paying before. So it's been a it's been a really good replacement for these customers and it didn't disrupt their their operations at all. Uh, and this is software that's been proven over a decade and, and that has hundreds of customers worldwide and customers at massive scale. Uh, customers like Ream that are running, you know, half a million units or more. Uh, pricing is the same. So when we talk about cost effectiveness, uh, you can look at it in the per data rate, which is how IoT Core is priced. You have free tiers, so you've got a, a free uh, opportunity to kick the tires and then uh, the exact same pricing that that Google provided with their IoT core. And I don't want to understate this, the fact that there's an upgrade path. So when you have a core, you have all those features that I talked about, but there are companies that need more, right? And, and as and, and as if you scale to several hundred thousand or million devices, there are cost benefits to moving to an enterprise version that will give you more capability in terms of running your services, give you more capability around edge, give you more flexibility in terms of enterprise integration, and it actually ends up being more cost effective at scale. And then you can start weaving in Edge uh, IoT. Uh, again, Edge is, is coming for the companies that we're working with that, that are leaders. They're doing things like running AI models that they built 20 years ago on Edge devices in the middle of, of, of fields, in the middle of places where they have very little connectivity. And then last but not least, Intelligent Assets is a no code application that allows customers to give this functionality to the business. So operators in the field that don't know a thing about JavaScript or know how to code a single line can control, monitor their devices and set alerts uh, all without needing uh, their IT department or an outside firm to help them. So this maturity curve uh, that I've put up before, a lot of companies, you start with data acquisition, uh, in terms of your IoT journey, uh, connectivity and capture, and then you obviously want to add visualizations to interpret that data, um, some base insights. And then I want to get more advanced. I want to start doing some um, rules and alerting and advanced visualization and, and reporting. Some prediction algorithms start here. And then I start getting serious about machine learning and AI and start doing, you know, get getting all this data to my folks in the data science department to do their modeling, be able to run that, uh, in my foundational layer, and then really start getting to edge, uh, unleashing the power of edge uh, in the field to reduce latency, to run in, in, in areas where 
I typically couldn't send terabytes of data per second because I need a satellite feed, and that's just not, not cost effective, nor is it even uh, technically possible to stream that much data through a satellite, right? Uh, but now I could run stuff locally, and I don't need uh, to stream all that data uh, into a data center or a cloud. That also gets very expensive when you get to the very high levels of data. All right, and I'll end with it is March Madness, and, and, and you might be able to guess where I went to school. There's a there's a pennant behind me. Um, go Purdue. Uh, we play tomorrow. And, and if good luck to everyone out there in your brackets, because it's a very fun time. Uh, and with that, I'll open it up to questions. Kevin, do we have any questions? at the moment maybe i'm a little early but i figured i'd give about a little less than 10 minutes so folks so. we are um here live obviously so if you have any questions for eric feel free to punch them in um either via the zoom chat box or the um the q a feature on linkedin live and we'll see if we can get some of these questions pulled up one sec let's try to work between two different interfaces um, so this question about custom mm -hmm. is, where would you go with custom versus build so how oh, would you that's a, that? that's a great question. let me back up a little bit so there's a lot of custom that goes into this so this is the heartbeat of an IoT, think of this like an operating system, basically, right? A core. But when you have a core, you, you still don't have a full blown solution, right? So this is like the bedrock of building a custom solution on top of this. And I say this all the time, there is still so much to do, right? There's a big difference between an electric vehicle company and an energy company and an agriculture company, right? We have cut customers that are doing uh, that are in all these verticals they start with this core and they have engineering teams that say okay i'm going to use this core piece of software and i'm going to build my own user interfaces i'm going to build my own uh, ai my own rules but i'm going to use the services of this iot core um, to build upon so i'm not building the lower level plumbing i'm building the higher level stuff that is very custom to my business and, and my needs what better um, software to build on top of than Clearblade? And that's just a plug yeah. in there for you, anyway. Um, open up a couple of questions. So the, the, the reason I said that was a rhetorical question. What is the best IIoT hardware to use? Oh, do you know what? That depends. And it really depends on the use case. And in fact, it, uh, I was just out at a customer um, earlier this week in Napa that, that um, they, they do water for purification for the wineries, right? And you go into those um, those closets where they have all the physical hardware, and 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 we work with a partner called Black Pearl that has great gateways. So so they're using those. It it all depends on what you need for the use case, though. So input output, what is needed at my uh, at uh, Met Chicago Metro here for the rail business is very different than what Heritage Systems needs out in Napa for purification of water. <laughs> so that's why. It's actually a really good question because you need to separate concerns, right? One thing Clearblade does very well is software. One thing we don't do at all is hardware because we leave that to the professionals that do hardware. And in the edge world, there's a lot of this mixing. And I'm not saying that the hardware folks don't have some good firmware and some good pieces, but they're not going to be the providers of your IoT core or your, your IoT foundational layer. They're going to be the 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 folks that specialize in their industries based on input output based on performance of that device in harsh environments right um so there's no one best it really depends on the use case and and the vertical so a couple more questions have come in as we're talking with so many folks leaving the iot core space how many folks are left and how many do, do you see coming in that's a great question great question so so I do a lot of counting. So if I go back to the, you know, when we really uh, were, were, were early, say 2015, 2016, we launched our, our first platform, I think early 2014, there were about 630 IoT platforms, right? 
Um, core platform, you know, platform's a little bit broader. Uh, I think last count, there's roughly around sub 100, say 70-ish. And I think there's going to be at the core foundational layer, you're going to have about five. You're not going to have more. It's going to it's going to play out like Windows versus Linux, right? And I'm going to show my age now. Back in the day when I worked at IBM, we had an operating system called OS2. That one didn't win, right? It was in the race, but it didn't win. You're going to see about a handful, maybe up to 10, I don't know, foundational layers. And, and, and the cream will rise to the top there. And then there will be still many, many companies that supply these vertical stovepipes on top of that foundational layer. So what I see as being beneficial is the fact that the dust is settling and all this noise is disappearing. And it will be a lot easier for CIOs, CTOs to choose a path as we go through this. Um, and it's gonna be great for IoT. But the rebalancing is happening now. And um, you know, my advice would be keep your eye on the news, but also don't believe in the marketing hype. And when you look into uh, adopting software, ask a lot of questions, ask for referrals, and, and really focus on scale and security. Those are the things that really matter. If you if this software can't handle uh a million concurrent devices uh, sending messages every minute, then look elsewhere, and that's gonna that's gonna that's gonna get you down to five or six right away. It's a couple, of and also cost, right? If this, if I've got a business and I've got a, a million units, and I don't want to spend X amount of dollars per unit, it just does. It's not financially viable, and that's why IoT has been held back is because the software hasn't been good enough to do that at scale at the right price. And, and, and you'll see more adoption as that pricing balances out over time. Uh, and the other thing I'll say is don't pay millions of dollars for a statement of work that's gonna take eight, nine, 12 months. That's been where most of the money's gone in this space is lots of complex IoT statements of work and science projects. And the end result typically is you get a system that works and then two years later, you've paid for three times that in maintenance to keep it up and running. Rebalancing, I, I love that word. Um, it's very uh, profound. Um, this is what every industry goes through in, this, in the technology space, in this space. This trough of disillusionment is here and it will separate, uh, it'll separate out the noise and everyone will go to their right areas and it's happening now. So two segue questions here. Are you seeing any standardizations in rules implementation? It is such a common need to generically apply rules across sensors, across industries. So standardization is always a loaded word for me. Um, I'm, I'm seeing standard practices uh, and uh, let's say no, not yet. I'm not seeing standardization. Uh, I'm, uh, I think what you need to see is that core functionality built into that foundational software uh and that's why it shouldn't be built outside of it right because it's it's a very complex piece of software especially at scale so i would look for vendors that have woven that functionality into their core software and make it available via api here's another question for you um how does iot core take care of security and data privacy in terms of gdpr well, GDP, it, 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 it's a piece of software that will allow you to comply with GDPR. There are other things that you need to do like SOC 2 compliance uh, and, and GDPR compliance. So there's a lot more that goes in. Uh, first and foremost, you have to have that security piece bound into that foundational layer and not an add-on. That's always a red flag for me when I see that, hey, software company B has teamed up with this company uh, C for the soft, for the security piece as an overlay to what they already have, that's a red flag because that should not be an overlay, that needs to be embedded into what you do. Uh, I mean, I can get into all the details on what we do, but um, it's it's gotta be a security first type uh, implementation of that core software. So zero trust is, is a key part. And, and, and locked down and encrypted and all that stuff. But it's a component that goes into GDP or, or any of these compliances. 
<clears throat> so uh, I was going to start reading this question for you, but it's a pretty loaded one. So I've just pasted it for you in the chat. It's come via LinkedIn Live. So just out of curiosity, IoT Core software stack is built using Google's IoT Core, and it is closing down in August. Um, then using which software IoT stack, this IoT Core foundational software will be replaced. So, so Google is getting rid of the IoT Core. It was a... It was a company they bought back in 2015 called Zively, and they they uh, they embedded Zively into their Google Cloud, and they they created all the services, and then uh, they made it available. That's the piece that they're they're sunsetting in in August. Um, so it's not built using a core; it is a core, right? Um, we are one of the vendors that have replaced that core in Google's cloud. Um, a lot of the hard work we did was basically weaving it into their billing system and their marketplace, right? And their, their self-service. And so a customer can go in and click, click, click and, and, and get it up and running. We also invested in a migration tool that we give away for free to allow a customer to convert all their Google IoT core at the systems into ClearBlade, but it still runs in the Google Cloud. So um, that's... a again it's a, a foundational piece of software that we actually built over 10 years and carved it out of our enterprise version of software so it's not something we just said hey we're going to go build it to replace google it was something if i look at our stack this this red box right here we've had since uh 2013 and it's been around and so we carved out core uh from this proven piece of software and made it easily subscribable available and and priced it the exact same way that Google does. So think of it as taking out a, a core piece of our engine and making it available to the public. That's what we did with Google. We're way over time, but I'm gonna just ask you to answer this question very quickly. How many layers does IoT Core have? Oh gosh, it's, it's I was gonna say something like Shrek. It's like an onion, it's got lots of layers. It's, it's, the way I look at it, it's one layer. It's one foundational piece of software. That's actually part of the trick. Instead of having all these moving parts here, all of this functionality is fused into a single runtime that scales massively. So it scales by nodes, CPU nodes in a cloud. So all of this fused functionality that runs in the cloud can also run at the edge. So it's a, it's, it's, it's a it's a single runtime that includes all this functionality. So think of it as as like a brick, a core brick with all these features in it that are available via API and usage, and and then built to scale massively. Um, that's the trick here. You can't just piece these things together and expect it to scale effectively, both function functionality wise or cost wise. Hopefully that answered your question. There's a couple of extensions to that. I'll ping you off the, offline with that because I want to just throw this last question in. I know I said I wouldn't do it, but here we go. What do you think of well-supported open source IoT core? So I like well-supported. I like open source. I haven't seen an open source core. I've seen open source message brokers, and I think that they're great. But a core um, is a lot more than that. And part of the trick with open source is... Um, you need to you you need to have a massive usage to support it the right way, and I think it's too early in this IoT game game to do that. So the way we did it was well, let's build um, purpose built software for core, and let's make everything open via API and open uh, via export, so we don't we don't lock anyone in, right? Um, eventually, maybe five ten years down the road open source is a way that we'll want to do this, right? But right now the industry is not there. All right, we're going way over time. Eric, I wanna get my own hook in a minute. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for being a part of the IoT Day Slam. We'll be in touch with you very shortly. Everyone, we're gonna whiz you off to the next session. We'll be starting in one minute. Cheers guys, take care. Appreciate it, bye-bye now.